Hello everyone and thank you for joining this talk. Uh, my name is Pavlo, I work at Lyft and I would like to talk about how to measure CPU performance of Android apps. Before we start, just a few things about me. Uh, so I'm a Google developer expert for Android and I also work on mobile infrastructure at Lyft. So yeah, today we are going to talk about CPU performance monitor monitoring on Android. Okay, so the goal is to monitor how Android apps uh, load CPU on, on user devices in the wild, in the runtime, and the main metric that we are focusing is the average CPU usage uh, which is used by the app application process, process per some time interval. And we will discuss it in more details in, in further slides, uh, how to get this metric and like describe this in more details. All right, so in order to get this metric, we will need uh, a bit of a, some intermediate uh, data points, some other metrics, uh, in order to be able to calculate the target one. And uh, in order to get those metrics, we have two primary data sources. So first are the Linux system files, because Android is based on the Linux kernel, and which means it saves the system directory structure from Linux, and we can benefit it by reading the corresponding like correct files for our needs. But also we can use just uh, native system APIs for some other data points uh, that are provided by Android SDK, and it's available either on the JVM level or, for example, on the native C++ level. All right, so first, types of type of data that we need to collect is a CPU specifications. So basically this is the data that uh, is not changing over time and it's uh, specific to some uh, kind of CPUs that our device is using. So for example, the most simple and most straightforward one is the number of cores. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, which just shows the number of physical CPU cores on the device. Of course, it's uh, as a standalone metric, it's not quite useful, but will definitely uh, uh, make use of it uh, while calculating some other metrics. And in order to get it programmatically, we can use either C language or we can do it on the JVM level. We just use the sysconf uh, function and we just specify the correct parameter uh, to get the right value uh, for us, for the system configuration. The next metric is a clock speed. Uh, and basically it defines the number of clock ticks per second. And usually the majority of IRM CPUs uh, use uh, 100 as a value, with static value. However, on some other architectures, it can be 1000. So for example, if you're using an emulator on a laptop that uses Intel CPUs, most likely this value will be 1000 for you. And this overall is measured in Hertz. And on the next slides, we'll see why it's so important uh, in this scope. Uh, for us. And again, in order to get it, it's pretty similar. Just use a sysconf uh, function call, but this time we're just uh, putting another parameter to that. All right, and now is the most interesting part because we are now speaking about CPU metrics, and let's see what actually metrics do we need uh, to get. Um, so overall, uh, we can all the metrics that we would like to get and all the metrics that are available can be categorized into two primary types. So first of them is frequency-based metrics. And they show the real-time data based on the CPU frequency values. On the other hand, time-based metrics are based on time values provided by the system. And those types of metrics are helpful to calculate the average CPU uh, usage over time. For example, if you want to get some percentage values, and this is something that we actually need. So for the context of this talk and for the context of this task, we will avoid using frequency-based metrics because uh, since we are using uh, implementing this solution on user devices in the wild, uh, the runtime collection of data with like high frequency would just overload user devices, and this is not something we need. So we'll just stick with time-based metrics here. All right, so the first metric that we're going to get is uh, called uptime. So uptime, it's the time since the device booted. Pretty simple, and we measured in, in seconds. So if we consider it on the graph, so yeah, we can just see the line between device boot and now, and yeah, this is the actually time between those two data points. And in order to get it, it's again pretty simple, just using some another Android SDK fu function. In this case, it's system clock API that will help us to get this value. All right, next metric is uh, much more interesting, uh, which is CPU time. Uh, 
And it is this, it's the time that CPU spent doing work for a given application process, um, which and it's also measured in seconds. So if taking a look at the graph, we can see it's the time between the up launch and now, but it's a bit more complicated because uh, CPU does not spend 100% of time doing job only for our application, right? It, it uses this like pseudo parallel execution mechanism where it's like very quickly switches between different processes and doing tiny bits of, of, of work for each of the process. So the blue bars actually define like those uh, tiny bits of time that CPU spends on our um, doing uh, work for our uh, application. And the CPU time will be just uh, uh, just a overall value, uh, overall uh, amount of time that CPU spent doing, uh, doing work for our application. And this time, in order to get it, it will be uh, a bit different. So we need to read the Linux system file, uh, which is uh, located under the proc directory, and then another directory which, is, which has the same name as uh, our process ID. So in this directory, we'll have a stat file. And below, you can see uh, the contents of this file. Uh, and as you can see, this is just like a string uh, with space-separated values where, where each value has its corresponding uh, meaning depending on the position of this file. And in this context, we'll just need uh, only four values. Uh, and let's see what those values are. Yeah, so these are the four values, and as you can see on, on the left, these are the numbers, the, the ordinal numbers in the file. So first two, it's U time and S time. So the U time, uh, if speaking in the human language, uh, basically defines um, the time that CPU spent uh, doing the work and ex executing the code that is written by the developer. On the other hand, S time, um, defines the time that CPU spent doing some uh, work, uh, executing some native calls on behalf of the application, of our application. And similarly, uh, CU time and CS time, they are defined the same thing, but just for children and child processes. And it's important thing to, to note is that all those values are measured in clock ticks, uh, which is kind of interesting measure. And yeah, this is something that is provided to us by API and we need to somehow deal with it. So overall, it means that we need to convert it somehow to seconds, right, to some like, meaningful value. So in order to get this CPU time metric, first of all, we just need to sum up all those four values. But if you remember, just recently we defined the clock speed metric, a clock speed value that uh, helps us to convert the clock ticks to seconds. So if you just divide clock ticks by the clock speed, you will just have the, second, uh, the value in seconds, which is exactly what we need. Next value is the process time. It's a bit more simple. Uh, basically, this is just a time since the application launched. And we also measured in seconds. Yeah, so just a line between app launch and now, just to know like how long the, our application process lives. In order to get it, we need to, again, refer to the start file. But this time, we just need to get another value. This value will be start time. And this is the time the process started after system boot. And again, it's also me uh, measured in clock ticks. So if, again, visualizing it, we can see the time between device boot and up launch. This is a start time. But we need this like purple uh, value on the graph, which is up launch, time between up launch and now. But we already have an up time value, which we defined just recently. So we just need to subtract the smaller from the larger one. And the formula will be the following. And again, uh, since we need to uh, convert start time to seconds, which is divided by the clock speed value. All right, and this is when it gets the most interesting because this is the first metric that actually can show us some meaningful value and meaningful data about how our application uses CPU. This is the average CPU usage metric. And it shows how much a load the application has put on the CPU since it launched since our application launched. And we show this, display this value like, as a percentage. So again, we need to come back to our graphs that we defined. And we already have two metrics, like CPU time and the process time. And yeah, we just need to define and know how much percent CPU time takes from the process time overall. 
and it's pretty simple to do. We just need to divide CPU time by the process time, and yeah, just multiply it by 100 to uh, convert the value to percentage. And however, here is the catch because um, you might notice that th this value might be greater than 100%. And moreover, for example, if you're using Mac, uh, you can write some uh, system commands that show CPU uh, usage, or you can use Activity Monitor, and you can see that they can also show values that are greater than 100%. And this is where we need our number of cores metric that we also uh, gathered before. And if we divide our value by the number of cores, we will just get the correct value uh, that sits between 0 and 100. And yeah, the value overall will be pretty similar to what, for example, Android Studio Profiler shows. However, there is a problem here. So if you can see, like, those values like CPU time and process time that we get, they all are connected to one single point in time, which is up launch. But for example, what if you want to have more flexibility and what if you want to measure CPU performance between different random time uh, points uh, of uh, our application life, which are not necessarily must be like up launch. Uh, and this is like hard to do because all the metrics and all the data that we get, like for example, from uh, Linux system files or some API calls, they kind of all related to the up launch. So here we need to have some more sophisticated way uh, for the analysis. Yeah, and basically what if we want to know the CPU performance between one minute ago and now? And this is, yeah, th those delta values, this is something that we need to, to find out. And here where it comes like relative average CPU usage metric, which is pretty similar to the previous one, uh, but yeah, with, with one exception is that it's more flexible and allows us to get in to random uh, or like t time points uh, of the application life, like time points of choice. All right, so in order to achieve our goal, for example, and to find out how our application behaved during the time between one minute ago and now, we need to do the following. So first we need to measure uh, the CPU metrics uh, and make the snapshot of data one minute ago. So we get the CPU time and process time Next, we need to do another measurement, but like now, in, during the second uh, point in time, and get the same values. And now, in order to get those delta values that we are looking for, we just need to use a simple formula where we need to subtract the smaller value uh, from the greater value for each CPU time and the process time. And when we do this, well, then we just like divide uh, CPU time, overall the resulting value by the process time, and convert it to percentage. And yeah, this is basically the target value that we are looking for. And again, uh, in order to prevent cases where uh, our value will be greater than 100, uh, we need to make it more convenient uh, for, for the user. So we just dividing it by number, of course. And when we have this value, it brings us a lot of use cases and waste for implementation. For example, we can do the measurements per some time interval, some static time, time interval. For example, we're doing measurement once per minute. And this way, like every new minute, we will know the average CPU performance during the last minute. Next use case is to do the measurement per some application screens or per application features, for example, Let's find out what how the CPU behave uh, between like launching the app screen and closing the application screen, and we need to know like how to uh, measure the performance of this particular screen, or maybe like flow of screens, feature, etc., which can be also done with this. Or we can just select any random time span between two selected events in our application if we want to do some some kind of measurement like this. All right, uh, so overall, uh, the resulting data is pretty the same as provided by the Android Studio CPU profiler. So if doing the measurement, for example, measuring like once every second uh, by the CPU profiler and by uh, this solution, we've found out that values are very close and yeah, they're pretty reliable to, to know and get the idea of, uh, of the Android CPU uh, performance. However, unlike the profiler, this 
this solution, this approach is available uh, to run during the runtime of our application on user devices and uh, cover many use cases of different types of user devices, different circumstances, and stuff like that. And also, it brings opportunities for building some observability tools uh, on top of it. And for example, compare the data across different releases. So like how the new release, did the new release uh, degrade or like regress in terms of CPU performance comparing to the uh, previous release. Or for example, between experiments, if you're using like A and B testing. Or for example, between code owners. Uh, and of course, all of those uh, features and like approaches, they require a bit more exploration in, in each uh, direction, but overall, all of them will be will be will sit on top of, of, of those uh, things that which is described in this talk. Yeah, and also uh, the same way we can collect other metrics like memory, battery, network bandwidth, and many more. And especially like uh, memory one uh, proved to be very useful uh, to identify if new experiments introduce, for example, some regressions, memory leaks, and stuff like that, comparing to the previous ones. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks a lot for, for joining this talk. Yeah, and if you have, uh, if you want to discuss uh, this topic further, yeah, please uh, contact me on Twitter or like write me an email. Yeah, I would be happy to have a discussion. Thank you.